what I would, what I'd love to know is if you were to tell someone what emotional fitness is and how they can practice it kind of practically, yeah. what would, what would be, what would be without any hacks or, or uh, tips, what, what would be a good place for someone to start? I always start with my clients with social media when they wake up and cause usually people nowadays make their feelings feel better and try to avoid thoughts by going on TikTok or Instagram or checking text messages or checking all kinds of Snapchats. So if you wake up and you start your day with compulsions, you're going to continue your day with compulsions because your brain is just wired like that. Your brain's like, oh, we're doing this right now. And then I'll give you more thoughts of this. So I would push social media till the end of the day. So I'm not even telling people to cut it out completely. Have two hours at the end of the day. Usually people have six to eight hours during the day, just going there. Have your two hours. You can do whatever. You can scroll as much as you want to. You can, Two hours at the end. Of, in those two hours, you can watch Netflix. You can do all kinds of things at the end of the day. But in the beginning of the day, when you wake up, even if you have anxiety and your brain says, oh, we have to figure this out. We have to figure this out. Go like, stop brain. No, we're going to go now and grow our physical fitness or our business. We're going to create something. We're going to do these actions or we're going to make breakfast for us, healthy breakfast, but we're going to do it mindfully and not while we're doing breakfast, spending time in our head, thinking about what our boss is going to say or your job. We're going to make the breakfast. And in the beginning, the brain's not going to like it. It's like, this is not what we're doing. We're usually doing eight things at the same time. This is not okay. We have to figure this out. We have to be productive. We have to plan our work right now in our head. So we're good at work, but even you thinking things that you like, doing things that you like in your head is going to uh, be a compulsion and it's going to turn, your brain doesn't differentiate. It doesn't know, oh, she likes to plan, but she doesn't like to think about things that give her anxiety. Your brain's like, hey, if you like these thoughts about planning, you probably also like these thoughts about your partner cheating on you. And if you like these thoughts, you must like these thoughts. Your brain's like not, not like this is positive, this is negative. Your brain's like, hey, you've been daydreaming a lot about this. Can you daydream about getting into a wheelchair or having a car accident? Here are some thoughts about that. So it's, a, it's not only a good place to start is also cutting out the things that you think you like doing, like daydreaming or planning your grocery list in your head while you're doing something. So doing that, mind, waking up, and I like to do something physical, like physical fitness and doing it mindfully. And you can use your phone as a tool where you set a timer and you say, this is what I do, by the way. I go running and I set like a timer maybe for 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour. Not allowed to touch my phone. I put the timer on and I go running and I always bring my brain back. You always bring it back. You're literally teaching your brain like a dog. So you're running and your brain might be like, oh, think about what Kathy did at work. Or think about what your boyfriend said this time. And the urge is to literally talk back. It's almost like this urge, I have to talk back. I have to control this. And it's going to be about no brain. I'm running right now. And you can like, some fun things I created for me is like, no brain, I'm bougie. I'm running. I'm running like, I don't talk to you. I'm, it's not talking time right now. What are you talking about? And I go back, focusing on running, focusing on around me. And some people are like, oh, how do you do mindfulness? And that's another compulsion. You try to control getting mindfulness. Mindfulness is something actually that you get better at when you practice it. A lot of people are, this is the same thing as asking, um, how am I going to become a great soccer player? Tell me, give me the book or the technique to become a great soccer player. You need to start playing soccer. Now, there's a few things with mindfulness. You just come to the present moment. A good saying to say is do the thing that you're doing well walk well drive well don't listen to music don't listen to podcasts to make a feeling feel better i'm not saying never listen to music but have you tried out to drive without music and podcast it sucks in the beginning and i'll tell you why it sucks because your brain has the fear it loses control over the thing that you used to do which is avoiding feelings and avoiding thoughts so it's like no it gives you it's going to give you good reasons like no Give me, uh, we need to listen to a podcast. We need to listen to Joe Rogan because it's going to make us grow. It's going to give you a good reason. It doesn't care. It will give you a good reason. And if you do it, 
you were still a slave to the brain. So think about this. Are you setting your values or are you reacting to the good ideas that your brain gives you? Because a lot of times these good ideas are really just compulsions again. Yeah, from time to time, while you're making a video or creating something, your brain's going to give you a good idea and you can use it then. I'm not saying anything against that. But if you wake up and you say, I'm going to go to this social event tonight because I want to grow my relationships. And yeah, I have anxiety, but I go. And if at night, just before the brain's like, no, you need to be more productive. You need to maybe work on this project. The brain will literally, and I'm saying this truthfully, the brain, it will feel wrong. The brain will give you thoughts that it makes it feel wrong. But that's exactly why you got to do it. Because you're showing your brain that you're the boss and it only feels wrong because it's the old pattern. But over time, the more you do it, it will feel normal. But it's not about the feeling. Get the feeling out. It's about doing the actions. So I tried to give like some examples where you can like start doing emotional fitness. Um, you can check out, I mean, I'm going to say this here, shameless plug, but the emotional fitness program. I know um, you tried it. I think you got it. I have done it. Yeah. I went all the way through it. I got a lot of value from it. I can highly recommend it to anyone that's um, wanting to build their emotional fitness and wanting to um, really practice some of the concepts that we've been talking about today. Um, yeah, it showed it within that program, there's clips of star actually coaching people on these very topics. So people are going to bring up a lot of the questions that you may well have questions I had, um, and they're getting coached on it. And then you're getting to see that and really get the value from that. So it really helped me get an understanding what, of what emotional fitness is and some practical ways that we can apply it. Other people are applying it, um, and, and diving in so yeah i highly recommend that 